Happy Monday. Happy Tuesday. Happy How late you? October. Um, you know why late October is great? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Let's go over it. It's the NZ oh, Podcast. Hey, I'm Zach yeah. Jackson. He's Andre Knott. Find us at a to z podcast.com, facebook.com slash a to z podcast on all your favorite social media platforms at Akron Jackson and at Dre Knott. Um, can hey, I brag we, we for a second? We got this thing on backwards, though. You're in a hotel room and I'm at home. Yeah. The other way around. You know, life life comes at you in funny ways. So, uh, um, yes, go ahead, brag, brag, son. Uh, life accomplishment unlocked. Um, you know, some of you out there are thinking it's big news, but and it really is. I just want to say, for the first time in two decades of traveling, like every other week at minimum, I finally went on a trip, and I didn't forget anything at home. <laughs> so, just That's wanted to, what say. to brag about. <laughs> <laughs> Over the course of a year, I spend a whole paycheck at Walgreens or Target or hotel gift shops buying things I forgot. One time, I went to Indy I... for a week and left all my damn clothes <laughs> into my living room. <laughs> that was many years ago. Oh <laughs> well, you know what, though? You talk about leaving a check. I've probably spent a check. Or a check on buy, and I travel a ton, as we all know. Um, but sometimes that's some of the coolest shit I end up buying. To be honest, <laughs> like every year, every year, every year that I go to San Fran or Oakland slash Oakland, I've got like three brand new hoodies. That every year, like you would think, I do know. I'm telling it right now. On October, whatever the date is, I know to bring an extra sweatshirt or something warmer to San Fran. Do I ever do it? Kinda, but I always end up buying one at the Nike store right down the street from the hotel. <laughs> you know what's um, funny about that is when I was out there a few weeks ago, my aunt lives in the San Jose area, and she was driving me to mm-hmm. Oakland, uh, and we stopped for lunch, and it was like this total corporate cookie cutter area. Look, looks like anything in Ohio, right? Just it was just right ridiculous traffic and way overblown like everything is out there and I saw right. a Marshalls and I said I want to go in Marshalls and she's like what? <laughs> and yeah. well, I, I, I wanted to get an obscure hoodie for like nine ninety five, like I do at home and they didn't have any great ones but I ended up getting a Stanford long sleeve shirt for like $7 and oh, it's nice. perfect because for Halloween this Saturday I'm invited to a party, first time in my life, I know, and I'm going to wear that Stanford long sleeve under my costume because I'm dressing as a white claw black cherry can. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you're dressing up as Andre Knott's assistant coach with a Stanford shirt on, so you can do that too. <laughs> so I'm saying the blacker the cherry, the sweeter the juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of all the other things. I'm glad you brought this, all the other things on the road uh, because I wear contacts, and that may be going away soon. Um, that's something else that I didn't. I meant to tell you when we were starting. Clear, uh, Clear Lasik hooked up the, uh, Dustin Fox has hooked up uh, our guy Emmett uh, Golden. I may be working on uh, something with them. They're going to be a part of the uh, of the Rex Connect Foundation's uh, outing coming up here on, on November 10th. They're actually going to uh, they're going to give away. They're going to do, they've donated a LASIK eye surgery valued at over four thousand dollars. That's going to be part. Think about that. They have donated a four thousand dollar valued surgery for LASIK wow. eyes. So you can come to our foundation's uh, the dinner. This pl- not a dinner. You can come to this situation. It's not a dinner. Can, <laughs> no, it's not a dinner. Celebrity bartenders. It's not going to be a dinner. I mean, there'll be food there. There will be food there. But it's not a dinner. But you can come to this and walk away and have freaking LASIK eye surgery. You could, you could, you could find a way to do that, probably for less than four. It's, it's just going to be really cool. But I bring that up because contact solution do you know how much i i like at the end of the year right now i got like five bottles of contact solution i have like six deodorants i i should never make the excuse and they're all at the same point they're all like three fourths used or one fourth used um i'm trying to think i'm just glad you brought this up because i oh razors for shaving i probably have 25 razors used once or maybe one and one and a half times all of this comes from what you at toothpaste? I got four bottles, four four tubes of toothpaste probably. All come from things I forget when traveling. And do you know how expensive they are? The hotels they put us in. So I had to walk in just in crazy places, the CVSs. So God, you know what? That is a big accomplishment. Now that I, now that I take a step back. <laughs> yeah, now like adulthood back, is adulthood is not a destination that you just arrive at one day, right? Like you, mm-hmm. you, you. There's detours. <laughs> A lot of them. Here's yeah. another detour for me, and you know this because I've been taking pictures that only you and another person know about, just in in our own childish way. So, I told myself this off season, and I shouldn't even say this on the podcast, but it is what it is. I told my wife, so it's, I'm already ruined. But I want to eat better. I'm not look. I'm not gonna become one of those skinny models, and I'm not gonna be jumping boxes on, on videos and no shit like that. Um, and you already heard me say I want to get my eyes better. I'm 40 years old. This is my midlife crisis because if I make dating, Lord knows the world will blow up. 
<laughs> so I'm gonna try to better my eyesight. I'm gonna try to eat better. I'm gonna, that don't mean I'm not gonna eat Swinson's. That don't mean I'm not gonna eat chicken. Because I'm still on Tuesday. I still might go get me a snack. None of that's changing. I'm still gonna drink a lot of Miller Lite. I'm still gonna drink White Claw. I'm still be, I'm still gonna be me. I'm just trying to be a better me in the next 40 years if I get it. So I've been trying to eat a little better. Um, I've been working out a little bit, walking or walking. I'm not. I'm not gonna like start like I said, jumping boxes and do any of this new new age shit that you guys go spend a ton of money for. Yeah. And put it all on you might be jumping some shoe over. boxes. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know I got a ver- I got a vertical now. I can still jump <laughs> on that ass. And when I go into the ass with the SAV Athletic Hall of Fame, I I don't want to look like a fullback. I kind of oh look like okay a yeah that's was. right. No, that, this is a good and goal. Is, this is a good goal. Yes. No, so I January remember, and, I, and, I, and I've told the story on the podcast two off seasons ago when Jen took all mm-hmm. the goodies out of the house, mm-hmm. all the organics <laughs> in there, and we went to that basketball game, and I was like, where oh. is Andre? And you came back, and you had your whole face <laughs> in that plate of nachos like they were the last nachos of synthetic cheese on her. <laughs> and you said, man, you don't understand what it's been like this week. <laughs> <laughs> I think I bought a candy bar and brought it home and left it in the truck just to have it, just in case. Uh, it does happen every year. It does happen every every off season. It's just like, all right, you're not gonna be on the road for. for we three we we went to this game together, obviously, and we didn't talk to each other for the first hour and a half we're there because I knew some people and he knew some people. And when we finally sat down to actually watch the game and pretend like that's why we were out on Friday night, I couldn't find him, and he comes back with the, the most. <laughs> important plate of nachos he's ever eaten. <laughs> oh, those are the best nachos I've ever had in my entire life. In my entire life, I've never had a nacho better. <laughs> like, like, there wasn't none that ever touched it. And they were stale chips. You guys know when you go to a high school game, them chips don't be good. Oh, they especially good at the end of the night. season. They bought those on October 15th at Sam's Club on discount. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Somebody just bought a thing. On senior night, those, those things taste like shit. <laughs> but they were so good that they were so good to me that night we were at that game. I was like, oh man, you don't understand. It's been a tough week. We've been eating green shit. We've been eating green shit every damn night. Every yeah. Day. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so I'm, trying to look, I'm trying to look. I'm trying to, and I do this every offseason. There's always a picture of me in spring training, and people are like, oh my god, it looks like you lost well, 20 pounds. Let's just, usually it's 15. Then usually by April 30th, I get it all back. I, I can I can be honest about something without being a pervert, right? I, I know I can't. Right. There's always yeah. many people on Twitter, but I know I can do this because I do it all the time. You stand next to Natalie Herbick like you did the other night on TV. Like you start feeling bad about yourself. I don't care who you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I looked over. Well, here, here's, oh God, you're gonna get me in trouble. But you did it right. So she, when she first came in, I had never met her. Um, you're talking about when we did Fox. Shout out to JT. Shout out to the Kovacs. All those boys. Uh, I appreciate it. I had a good time doing that. And that was like one of those. Um, you and I had a conversation about somebody we're gonna have on the pod soon, and just how these are these are legends to us. Uh, locally that helped us become this. And watching right. that show was a part of You said it perfectly in our last podcast. But with Friday nights are so huge in Northeast Ohio, these guys, the John Telligens, the Danny Kaufman, uh, you know, the, the, you can go through all these. These guys are the, the people that were even Jimmy Donovan. Uh, all those guys we looked up to because they, they gave us sports. You know, they were they were the guys at 1125, 1124, 1050 that you ran into the TV too. So to be in that studio and to do that, it was a little nerve-wracking. Then Natalie walks in, and she's got, like, jeans on, and she's been outside. And I'm like, okay, she's cool. And then, like, we get ready to start the show, and I come in, and it's like 1055, 1058. You got nerves when you – and I don't care who you are. To me, I get nerves when I, I'm getting ready to do something that I always don't do. And I'm already nervous, making sure my mic's on right, making sure my fly's not down. And she walks in in this, in, this, in this dress, and I'm like, whoa, I'm a bit underdressed. And then, and then, and then, uh, and then they're like, and you guys are going to stand next to each other. I'm like, nah, why don't you put me next to TJ? Me, 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 that's my boy. <laughs> like, put me next to the dude. Don't make, me, don't, don't make people judge me against her. <laughs> she, she smells good. I don't even shower. <laughs> like, I, like, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I was like at the neighborhood party, hanging out with everybody before I came. I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but all right, so let me just tell this part of it, then we can talk sports of any sort. So I've been doing the running thing, and there's like a, a little league football field right around the corner from my house in a park, and it's got like a you know jungle gym and everything. The kids can play. Also, AJ gets out of preschool today, and I, I told Jen, I go, I'm gonna go run with AJ. 
And she's like, well, I'll go with you. And I'm like, all right. So we play tag with him, and he's warming me up playing tag. And Jen's like, I thought you said you were going to run gassers on the football field. And, I'm, and I, like, under my breath, I'm like, you only remember this shit I don't want you to remember. Damn. So <laughs> I go run, I go run gassers on the football field. After, and, like, and that used to be, like, it was, you know, it used to be easy. Um, and I was like, I'm going to run a couple. I'm going to sprint, you know, sprint, like, ten hundreds and just and work my way through that. And I was like, I haven't done it in years. But if I can do that, I know I'm in decent shape. And I couldn't. I did like five, and I was about to die. And I see my f- f- four-year-old son and my wife on the sideline laughing their asses off at me as I'm bent over thinking I'm going to dry heave, throw up, or die all within the next two minutes. And then suddenly Jen's like, we can run some with you. And I'm like, nah, I'm all right. And so AJ and Jen run with me. They didn't run as fast. And all I thought about in the seventh one is I fucking hate both of them. That little fucker ran up and down the field, laughed, talked, jumped, drank water, ran, ran, and wanted to run more, play tag. And I was like, Jesus Christ. 34 years ago like i'm just thinking like i used to be like this little four-year-old that never stopped and like now i run hard for 200 yards and i feel like i'm gonna die and i'm not bragging about this this isn't good and i look at him and he's laughing running loops around me going dad let's play tag i wanted to tackle him and like put him underneath the field and i was like okay you think you're I'm, I'm, it's just amazing how what can happen to your body in time when you don't take care of it i guess is the point but I'm gonna keep doing. Let me ask you a question about him. I mean, obviously, every time I'm around him, he's going, he's going a million miles an hour down the driveway with no brakes yes. and all that. Yeah. Like if we all took that. him to a football game with us over the next few weeks, would he give a darn about what's going on out there? Or would he just take off running? And, and Uncle Zach he would. Uh, he would watch. He would. Yeah. He would watch probably two series by both offenses, and then he'd want to play catch. Or he'd want to, you know, like he would want to. Like that's the cool thing about him now. Like, and I've never forced it upon him. Like, we had a kid on the corner. He's, like, 10 years old. And there's one that's 10 and one that's 12. They're brothers. And they play on the little football, the local football team. And they play – and I, I love it because they're me at that age. They're outside. Like, they get off the school bus. And literally within five minutes of the school bus – like, most of the time, the, the younger kid gets off the school bus. It doesn't even go inside. Drops his back on the ground. And they're playing football, tackling each other, bloodying each other up in their, on their yard. And I'm like, this is great. Now AJ sees him. He's like, Dad. Uh, he's like, Dad, let's, let's play catch with the football. Grab the football. So and so and it's funny because Sabo was over with his son the other day and literally uh, I texted you guys nobody reacted. <laughs> My buddy was like, "Those two in the same room is fucking steroids." They almost broke everything in the room, catching everything, tackling each other. Uh, but uh, like so, and AJ catches okay for a four year old. He's four. He's a young four. But you put him around. You put him around Jacks and other kids. Catches every football, tackles everybody. Like it's a and it's a Nerf ball and it's young. Um, but I would say he would pay attention to Z for about 15 minutes, and then it would be like, let's go play catch. Let's go. Like, he'd want to do something, but he'd still kind of right. watch the game, but that's how long he – that's right. his extension okay. span at this point. Oh, that's mine, Bella too, so will that's come, fine. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. Bella, though, to be honest, Bella would come watch the whole game. Like, Bella would sit there and ask good questions, and like, and, and she would be good about it. Like, she's, she's – She's smart about well. Oh, I sometimes wonder who her real father is because she's very intelligent. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's scary the knowledge. That she has. Yes, I mean she has she has asked me questions or talked to me, and I'm like, wait, are you in kindergarten or tenth grade? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Oh, like, don't can't. you know who I am? I'm drunk Uncle C. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'm just here to bring pizza and donuts. I'm like, oh, I'm right. for nothing else. All right. Uh, um, no, so since yeah. we already went over this, uh, if you're new here, our main sponsors are Cleveland Scene, Honeymoon Grill, American Fireworks. Uh, we support those who support us. They've all been awesome to us. Some of you guys, shout out to you, Walt. He uh, was in Akron for work today, made sure he went to the Honeymoon Grill. Um, if you're in bonfire season, clam bake season, it is an awesome time of year. American Fireworks is always open. Uh, they have been awesome to us. And if you tell them A to Z sent you, they've been known to do some things to help you out. Uh, one thing they do is we talked about last podcast is they shoot the fireworks every Friday at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Maslin. This week it's Saturday for the really big game. Maslin McKinley mm. is the people watching Super Bowl. And if you're anywhere near Northeast Ohio on Saturday afternoon and don't have plans, the Buckeyes are off. They stink anyway. I encourage you to go to Maslin. You will not second be biggest, disappointed. Second biggest. Second. No, second second biggest day in Stark County of the year behind the Pro Football Hall of yeah, Fame. Absolutely. Buckeyes. Absolutely. Both teams are good this year and it's just atmosphere wise, I mean, going back to being a little this, kid. It's it's nothing like it. Is this the yeah. hundred and what? Twentieth or Well, like, let's I'm see. Sure, I'm, 
No more because 94 was the 100th game, and then they played again in the playoffs. That was game 101 when Josh right. McDaniels caught the the uh, throwback pass. So Right, right. Um, Damn. They played a few more times in the playoffs, so they'd be going playoffs, on 130. Right. Jeez, we're old. That's a, we are old. Man, I remember when they played 100. I remember they played. I, I yeah. used to play. We used to play Maslin the week before. Right. Until last year, so he would play them the week before. Um, they played, and you know what? It always helped us out because we always thought they looked past us. <laughs> like, like we were always, yeah, like, well, no doubt. At, you couldn't blame them. You couldn't blame them. But and then once you beat them a couple of times, we're like, all right, enough of that. Basically, um, that is a good weekend. I do appreciate our sponsors. Hopefully, we have more coming. Um, now that it's the off season, we're going to work towards that. And if there's a company that that you think fits uh, us. And if you're a listener of us, you know what I mean when I say if you feel like they fit us, let them know. <laughs> reach out to me. Reach out to me. No, but reach out to that company. Reach out to me uh, or reach out to Zach, and we'll try our best to uh, do what's best for that company and continue doing what we're doing. We got some plans to uh, – and I know Zach usually does this, but I'll start doing it now too. Now that I don't got no excuse not to because I ain't got no job really at this point in time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Keep it real. <laughs> Keep it real. We got some cool shit coming, though. We got some cool interviews that we're going to do. We're going to do some different stuff. Um, I'm going to do the free throw challenge uh, that was from last year, sooner than later. Um, we just got some really cool stuff that's coming. Uh, we want you guys to be a part of it and uh, and let us. And, and and when you go to iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast, make sure you leave a note, a message. Even if you hate me and you can't stand me, that's fine. Let it be known. Um, but I appreciate it. Just like some guy went off to me on Twitter yesterday and said, nice rant about fucking here, you dumbass. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I've gotten a few of those messages, too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I was laying with your mother when you when you said that. Anyway. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, you weren't. You were running sprints. <laughs> <laughs> Dying. <laughs> um, you mentioned Ohio State sucking. I'm glad you said that. What do you think it stems from? Because... I, I, the whole urban, and I can't believe I'm saying this, the whole urban part of the situation, um, and this is crazy because I the last thing I want to talk about is coaches having jobs or not having jobs, but if the fire ain't there no more urban and you can't get guys up for big games, that might be the biggest sign of where you're at in your career. Well, or you're no longer, or these five-star guys aren't five-star guys, guys that you're recruiting. But if you're recruiting the best players in the world, and that's what your recruiting lists say, Zach, there's no fire. There's no, there's no. There's, there's nothing special. Tell me where. Tell me where's the now here. And I say that they lost a 40 year starting at, starter at quarterback. Yes. Like I know they lose talent year in and year out. They and I don't want to be that guy. And there's a lot of assholes out there that just expect Ohio State because Alabama does it. They expect them to go 12 and 0, 13 and 0 every year and be impressive. I'm not that guy. All I'm saying is I don't see any special players on the field other than Boza, and I don't see them play like they are Ohio State. They play like I'm going to get drafted. And that scares me. Yes, and that's an issue. And I, although we talked about it, touched on it last week, Nick Bose is doing the right thing. You have to be a dumbass to think that he's not. This is what's out mm-hmm. there, Dre. You know, th- this is this is reality for these guys. Um, they have been told in most cases that they're great since they were young. They are on the precipice of finally making some money. They've had a certain level of accomplishment at Ohio State, and they they're 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 knowing what's next. I, I do believe. That's part of it. Um, I see an offensive line that's struggling. Somehow I see really slow guys on defense, which five stars are not supposed to be that, right? And, right. you know, this is, the, this is the, the thing that we all are guilty of. Everybody externally wanted to fire JT Barrett two years ago and again last year, right? And Me everybody too. internally kept saying, you don't know what he means to this team. So not mm-hmm. only from a leadership standpoint, but I see fundamentally scheme-wise – the quarterback has to run in this system, and Dwayne Haskins is not a runner. And so the, in addition to the receivers, just not making plays, catching the ball Saturday and Sunday in my life, I'm he's not, not well, running. Part of the, part of, right, part of the problem defenses are taking is, that away. Yeah, part of the problem with the receivers on Saturday is the guy that Urban held on to too long. And I hate bringing that part of the situation to this situation, but the receiver position has always been important at Ohio State since Paul Warfield – Chris, Chris Carter, when have the Ohio State not had a, a, a top uh, – since my, my, the kid that's with the New Orleans, right? they don't have – Curtis Samuels doing, actually had a decent game yesterday. NFL was great yesterday, by the way, but you were stuck watching the team in orange. We'll get to that. Um, Ohio State doesn't have a, Ohio State doesn't have a star wide receiver. 
Like that's unurban like, and that's really on Ohio State like. And then that has to go back to that weirdo that was the the, the fucking coach for wide receivers. Well, I th- they've recruited a bunch of big time athletes. And few of them have developed. Now, Paris has come a long way, but he's never going to be a natural receiver. You know, he's going to be a return guy, jet sweep guy, and cover kicks and be a fourth receiver in the NFL, right? He's 21 years old. He's big and fast. He might get drafted on the second day. But you can't make somebody a natural pass catcher. It's like David Njoku, right? He's never going to be a natural pass catcher. He has to work on his game all the time, and the Browns have to put him in positions where he can go and jump over people because that's what he does. Nothing else comes naturally to him, right? And then these other guys – that have this supposed recruiting ranking pedigree, Dre, they don't make plays. I mean, they made them early in the year against East Missouri. But, right. I mean, I just yeah, but that don't matter, right. Saturday night, 73 throws and balls that needed yeah. to be caught, balls that should have been caught, just consistently not caught. So right now they don't belong in the playoffs. They don't belong in the playoff talk. It is only midseason. Uh, Humble Pie can do a talented team good. We've seen that before. Um, they, this team has been through a lot. I think some of that is Urban's doing. I think it goes back to Zach Smith, obviously, and it goes back to what's out there for these guys. It's a, it, it's kind of reminiscent of the post-national championship season to me where they never really got going until later, and then JT got the DUI, and they never got the groove back, right? Yeah. Um, so we'll see. The, these are different teams. There are different circumstances. But for an Ohio State team with two talented and proven backs in Dobbins and Weber to not be able to run the ball, and then the quarterback can't run they're, they're They're like the Browns. They don't have a strength offensively. It's being made up as it goes, and that shit just doesn't right. fly. Well, and you, and, I, and, I, and you know, and people that listen to, to us know that I'm usually in glass half full. After what I, and it's not just yesterday's game. I, other than that burst versus Penn State, I don't count those other those other preseason games. I just don't see anything that like they have no identity. But I go back to and and it, look and I don't blame Boza and I think that's a great part of the conversation that we could have and we will have. We don't have to have tonight. Just about where college athletics are, and it's a slippery slope. But to me, the one thing I want to say, yeah, it is October, and a lot of things can change, and they can they can win out. But until the and maybe and it is Ohio State. And they do have some playmakers in the, at the at the running back position, but it doesn't matter if you don't use them the correct way and you throw seventy times and you don't block for them. I mean, this is Ohio State, Ohio, and I'll give uh, I don't want to give Michigan credit, but Ohio State two things you knew you could get it's about three things you knew you could recruit every year or go get from the NFL an offensive lineman that was that was competent that could play on that could start on an offensive line in the NFL today, a wide receiver that could start in the NFL today, and a running back. They have the running backs; they don't have the other two. And that has to go back to this 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 offense where you're constantly in the gun. Like Ohio State used to play, and I'm not saying, and I'm not one of those. I'm not your boy who's 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 about to keel over because games because because college teams are running 100 snaps and they can't play it the way they used to play it. Um, I won't say it's big because you're getting in trouble right now. But they have to find a way to get back to having an identity of some sort, some way. And they got to run the football again. Like you got to change up, and you have to run. Those are two of your best playmakers, and without playmakers, they don't have a chance in my in, in the world that we want them to go to. They want to play on Saturdays and go play Northwestern and Purdue. Well, I guess not Purdue because fuck Purdue had playmakers and they couldn't tackle him. He's running through the middle of the defense as we speak. And this is the worst. How you know what? Let me ask you this. I'm all over the place with Ohio State because it's Saturday night. It was embarrassing. How much do they mis- miscarry? In the secondary, I'm asking you because you covered them. You know Kerry. You know his ability to recruit and what he did with secondary guys. Because I don't see any guys that Kerry recruited out there. Well, I mean, they did have a run of first rounders, and they don't have one now. But you're right; that's a huge loss. I mean, this is a guy before you're talking about Kerry Combs, and before he went to the Titans. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a guy that turned down a million dollars at least once from other programs because he was loyal to Urban and to Ohio State. There was right. there was one way that he was actually getting away, or two probably one to be a head coach and two to go. From Mike Vrabel, he took the opportunity, and that's yeah, that's a huge lot. I mean, they've had a lot of turnover, they've had a lot of controversy, and we've seen this with teams in different sports. You know, you, you have the hype, you you go through some stuff, and sometimes you just kind of go through the motions. I mean, looking back, right? We know we now know Penn State really isn't that good, but the Buckeyes had no business winning that game, right? They had true. one drive true, true, true. based on a, yeah. busting a couple slip screens, and all of a sudden they scored. You know, they right um, that's true. They, they walked into uh, Beehive, 
Purdue didn't back down. Purdue has one great player and a really good coach, and they had the perfect ingredients, and the better team won. It was an ass kicking. Uh, on every, there's four player of the week awards <laughs> given in the Big Ten every week, right? And Purdue players won it. All three star recruits, right? Because they don't get these Ohio right. State guys. So well, I, I want to go to plays I'm glad, this week. I'm glad you brought that up. Well, let me say this: I don't know who Purdue right. plays this week, but bet against them because that was the Super Bowl. They're still probably partying and wherever the hell Purdue is right and now. And they should be. <laughs> yes, and, and they, they should, should be. be. And, and this is the last thing I'll say about. It. We can move on to the uh, elephant in the room. Um. Ohio State, and this is this is ass backwards to say, but I wholeheartedly believe it. Ohio State misses having the three star recruit, the two star recruit from Centerville, the kid from New London, the kid from Akron, the kid from, and I'm not one of those hokey poke. You you know this. I'm, as I say this to you, I know some asshole will tweet me and be a smart. So you you got to recruit more than Ohio Ohio to be to be a great Ohio State team. I get that. But the change, and, and that goes back to, oh, yeah, I'll go to Ohio State because I can go to the NFL. And I keep talking about that slippery slope that you have of, yes, you want to be one of the best programs in the nation. Yes, you want the best kids in the nation. But I also want kids that have pride of being at, at such a school. And when you get kids that are local that grew up their whole life that wanted to get the Buckeye, want to get a Buckeye sticker on their helmet, and they know, and they remember watching Antoine Will, Winfield, or they remember watching David Boston, or they remember watching, you say the name. And that's why they're there. Or Bobby, you know, Bobby Carpenter was a kid that, in their little neighborhood that made it big. Those stories mean something. Or Dustin Fox playing. You know, you say you go to you go to high school in, in Glen Oak, and you, and you see a picture of Dustin uh, Dustin Fox in Glen Oak, and seeing him at Ohio State, seeing him blocking a, a punt, and seeing him jumping over boards, and or seeing you know, like <laughs> those those things. Those, yes, I, I should have been a smartass about it, but because I'm really being serious, I think that made Ohio State special. When you did get the great recruits, when you got Kenyon Rambo from California, but you still had three running backs that were one from Cincinnati, one from Lorraine, and one from Cleveland. I think there's something about that. They don't have that anymore. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's fair to question a lot of things with this team, intangible-wise and execution-wise, obviously, and, and they've they've been bad. Um, the one thing I, I, want, I forgot earlier, you mentioned your wife's event, and speaking of Ohio State, uh, it sounds to me like you're going to go full Jim Trestle back at YSU and rig the drawing for the LASIK. Um, but... <laughs> it's, it's, it's the Rec to Connect Foundation night. Uh, there's a lot of fancy details and words, but basically we come there, we drink beer, we ha- we tell jokes, we tell stories, we have fun. Dre gets a lot of people hey, you know to come who, out, gets a lot of prizes. You know who's, co- you know who's coming, right? It's, you're not going to be the biggest person from Manchester there. Oh, boy, Sarah Shookman. Short haircut Sarah Shookman oh, is in the house. I like the short hair. I'm still Team uh, Natalie, though. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, you so you guys saying I should get Natalie to see if I can get Natalie to come too? Is that what you want me to do? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna hook you up with I'm gonna try to hook you up with Natalie Blue. Here, I'm gonna go run some sprints while you talk about what while, while you go on your next rant. <laughs> 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 Look at it, you wanna get ready now. But I ain't gonna run very many. <laughs> Uh, that hotel room, that whole hotel will be calling the, the floor since there's an earthquake over there. <laughs> November 9th, Barley House at Facebook.com slash A to Z podcast. We'll post the details, and Dre has been tweeting it. I will tweet it as well over the coming days and weeks because, gosh, I didn't realize it's only two and a half weeks away. Yeah, it's the day Michigan State and Ohio State play, uh, and what will be a garbage – Big Ten game because those two teams looked like crap this past Saturday, um, but it'll be a great event. It'll be a great night on a Saturday night tonight before the Browns play. Is it Atlanta at home? Falcons. I believe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it'll be right before the Atlanta game. Hopefully, they bring the Deion Sanders jerseys they're wearing tonight. And how about they're playing? A, and it's great that we're doing a podcast while the Falcons are playing the game at home. I know it's a new place, but I saw players dancing before the game, and I thought, still rings true. The best club in, in Atlanta is, is, is still at the football field. But they got it open tonight. What are they? Like, I'm like, why in the hell is the dome open in Atlanta? You spend all that money, and you open it on a Monday. The other best thing about that game right now in the Mercedes-Benz, it's the only time that Chick-fil-A can be open because usually they play on Sundays. We can do it in the Georgia Dome on a 50-yard line. Yeah, with the line. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. Luda. I know All a little right. Luda. Um, I know a little Luda. You are. You do. You're one of my favorite uh, You're one of my favorite cities on my uh, the road trips that we take throughout the year. Um, are you staying in St. Peter or are you in Tampa? Uh, to tell you the truth, I don't know. 
Um, <laughs> I love you. You're well, I, I've been both because I was over by the trout the other day, which is, I guess, Clearwater, St. Petersburg. But I had That's I had never true. been over there, at least not maybe when I was a kid. I, I have friends that, that have lived there, so they came and picked me up, but I had never been there previously. So That's I, I, St. Pete, basically. I really don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. And, but... and the and the football field is in Tampa. And it's right by the. It's right off the. Uh, it's the, right by the airport. Right by the airport. Yes. Yes. Right by the airport. And then you go. But over that there's bridge. so many different bridges and waterways that I've been over. I I just don't know where I am right now because it doesn't matter. I'm not driving. I'm going to the airport in a few hours and going home. So. <laughs> right. Right. Best way. No, you live. You're doing it the best way. Um. But you've been in that city for a little while. Um. The weather has been great there. It looks like it's been what it always is. Humid as shit and hot. Um. What we were we weeks eight now? It was week eight of the NFL season. I thought the Browns played an uninspired first half. Um, I thought the running game was just eh. I thought we talked about. I was glad we talked about surprises and disappointments last week on the podcast because it made me think as we were watching as I was watching the game. Um, the offensive line. And I, I just want to talk about a lot of other stuff before we get to the elephants in the room. And the elephants in the room are, are the, the two, to me, the two assistant coaches and the head coach. And the biggest elephant in the room is the owner. And I'll get to that too. Or owners. Um, offensive line play just scared me, Zach. The lack of consistency. The penalties are a problem. But let me start with this. Let's start with the penalty that wasn't a penalty. And I know that Lima and Carmen did a show a couple of weeks ago when the calls in the Oakland game were ridiculous. And I try not to do this. But at some point, the breaking point's got to be getting near. Some of these calls are outrageous. And I don't like doing this. I don't like talking about referees because you can't prepare for them. Like, I like talking about things you can prepare for and I can tell you did or didn't. But we can, you can't prepare for a referee to make the right call, wrong call. You can't, you can't prepare for that. And now there's no rhyme or reason for what we're seeing. Any quarterback that's gotten breathed on in the last three and a half years, I've seen guys damn near get fined and have to go to Pensacola jail. I saw a quarterback get hit on the side of the helmet full go by another player as he was sliding, and there wasn't a penalty. And what I'm getting ready to say is not nice and shouldn't be said, but I would have had no problem if a coach or player would have lost their mind and, and, and Orlando Brown, the umpire. Well, or the player. It's getting, that to, it's, get, it's, it's getting to that point, though, of frustration. As an as an athlete, I can't see how you can be on the field and continue to get these calls against your team and not lose your fucking mind. It has been it has been bad. Um, I, I hate to go. It's never one play, never one call, never one guy. Right? Um, the Browns have mm-hmm. been on the on the wrong end of some blatantly horrible calls. Blatantly horrible calls. They they still have not made the plays later. We still have had some things go questionable zone, but no doubt, you're right. Textbook foul, textbook fine, 15 yards personal foul, and they take it away with the worst explanation ever, right? Um, these guys know. And and what, however you fun. feel about the rules doesn't matter. By now you know right. what they are. You don't duck your head to hit. You don't hit guys in the head. You don't hit quarterbacks when they slide. That guy did them all and didn't get flanked. Right. <laughs> did all of them. Like you said, all of the above. It wasn't A, C, or B. It was D. It was it was it was all of the above. Like it's like I, I like like I said, and you, and if you listen to this podcast, you never hear us talk about this because we're just like it's part of the game. Get over it. But it's getting to the point where it's no longer just part of the game. We're seeing something that, and, and I don't want to be that that guy. Um, but all right, now that we're on the penalties, I think we've talked about this on the podcast. I see you bright writers, and all of you aren't bright. I'm being smart ass because most of you aren't. <laughs> you're just good at writing, putting words. You're just good at putting words together. Uh, this is like me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of good at what I do. It doesn't mean I'm good at a bunch of other stuff. Um, because I'm not. <laughs> I'm only good at about four or five things. Um. I keep hearing 12 penalties. They lead the league in penalties. Yes. Usually, and this is my opinion, and if you disagree, Zach, please speak up and say, yes, they lead the league in penalties. Most of the time, the team that leads the league in penalties is one of the worst teams. Right? Am I, I mean, like, yes. there's not, there's not yes. very many good times. There's not very many times good teams 
for two uh, reasons. Are, for one, the Raiders used the Raiders yes. used to, but that was different. Back that was a different time, different place. Yeah, for two reasons. One, you're un- it's it usually is a lack of discipline, and two, sometimes mm-hmm. when you're bad and the game is so fast and teams are better than you, you get penalized yep. a lot because you got to yes, grab receivers, you. you got to grab pass rushers, all that. Thank stuff. Thank you. When you're not as good as the guy over you, you usually commit a penalty because you're getting your ass kicked. This is what it is. A guy blows by you, you grab him. Um, now the un- <laughs> And I'm just asking this question. And if you disagree, that's fine. And I don't want people to and tweet me. If people want to, have, if you guys want to have real conversations with me, if you don't agree with something I say on the podcast, I would love to do. It. Don't be an asshole when you try to talk to me about it. Because if you're an asshole, I'll be an asshole back. It's a pretty fair way of life, right? I mean, if somebody treat, if somebody comes at you in a, as an asshole type way, most people are assholes back. I'm one of them. You talk to me like a human being, I will have a, a human being conversation with you. And a matter of fact, I'll appreciate it. We can we can have we can go back and forth. You go the other way, I'm probably gonna be an asshole or just block I don't even block people, I'll just be you. You just said two things that I agree with. Usually it's an undisciplined team or a team that lacks talent and can't keep up with their opponents. That's the Browns. And when it comes to discipline, that's not all on the head coach. Like I, I said this earlier in the year, and like, and, and look, I'm not sitting here saying Hugh Jackson should keep his job. I don't even give a fuck if he keeps his job. But I do think it's backwards thinking by most of us in Northeast Ohio to just think that the coach is going to change and things are going to change. It's not. That no, but are, you're they right. They, you're they, right. They, but they but are, let me finish on the penalties. Let me, uh, we can talk about that, but let me finish on the penalties because I, I want to have that conversation. No fucking coach in their right mind teaches this team to be undisciplined and teaches penalties. I think it's one of the lamest things in the world that every time a team gets a penalty, you think it's the coach's fucking fault. You think it's the coach's fault when they, when they, when they line up and go off sides on the fucking kickoff? I promise you that that was not practiced or coached or told to do. Like, that's asinine. They practice it the right way. You just got a dumbass that you were given out there on the field that made a dumbass mistake. It, like that, like it's that to me. It's that simple. Like, like I, you can go back to any time I played football or any time I was on a team. Nine times out of ten, if a guy made a stupid penalty, it was because he was a stupid motherfucker, not because the coach was undisciplined and didn't teach his ass. You're right. However, this, and I know, I know you're going there too. That this all stems from the top, and it does. But this is what you sign up for when you bring the guy back. And no one no will ever, no rational thinking person will ever think that one in thirty-one was his fault. And even though there were a couple times they should have won games, they didn't. Dre, and right now where they are, why is the NFL so popular? Parity, unpredictability. Yep. Right, every week a different yep. team can win. Until until last week, someone told me this last week, a double-digit favorite hadn't covered. So every time. Right. Wow. Every, every time somebody thought, well, this team's going to get killed because it's a good team against a bad team, that team didn't get killed, at least not to the tune. Right. right? We saw Buffalo, right. who, who might be the worst team in the league and maybe one of the worst in the last five years, beat Minnesota no, no. and might win the Super Bowl at Minnesota. <laughs> right? Yeah. But what Peter I'm saying too, right? is each Sunday it's it's situational. Where are you? What game are you coming off of? Who's healthy? Are you on the road three times in a row? Are you this? Desperate teams win because these are pros and these are talents. And the Browns have been a desperate team for like 75% of Hugh Jackson's games, and he's winning at 7% of those games. Yeah. Well, having real NFL players plays into that. All right, you. Uh, here's another. I, I don't disagree with Hey, look, he doesn't. Here, I'll say this. He doesn't deserve the job. He didn't deserve the job, though, on September 1st. And they let him have it. What you guys expected from him is out of the realm. Anyway, I just want to continue going upon this. I've heard you say this, and I'm not attacking Zach. This is just Zach. This is how we really have conversations. I, I enjoy having conversations where I don't agree with somebody, especially if I actually kind of like them. And I've got three Miller lights in me already. Um, I've heard you say repeatedly, and I haven't disagreed with you, that this team is much more talented than the teams that they've had the last two years under Hugh. Correct? No doubt. Give me an idea of where they're better. Why you say that? Why you say And I'm not saying you're – I'm just – I'm curious. Where do you think they're better at than they were maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago? Quarterback, Off the only position that counts. Yep, rookie. 
22, 23, 24 year old rookie. But yeah, go ahead. You're right. Miles Agreed. Garrett was never in the area code of 100 percent last year. He's a better player. I agree. Right. I agree. He's basically a, to me. He's still a rookie because last year was was just it was it, because of that high ankle sprain. Yeah. We didn't see a guy near him. So I agree. That's a word's going to Pro Bowl. Yep. 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 You're a rookie. Another a 21 year old. I'm glad that this is your 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 the the offense like. All right, Demar. You know what, Randall. Demar- was a Randall great might go to the Pro Bowl. Bowl. He's a fucking player. Yeah, he, he is, no doubt. He can play, and what he did yesterday, and he didn't get, a, and you don't get credit for it. And I'm not jamming you up, but this is what frustrates me with how we cover football in Northeast Ohio. I barely read anywhere how great of game he had. Everybody's so far, so quick to be the first to say that Hughes getting fucking fired. That nobody really bra- and 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 I'm not attacking you guys because I get it. It's been so much bullshit that you guys had to cover that you got to do what you got to do. But where's just football coverage? Like you bear and I'm and I know the athletic does this thing. You and Jason did your thing. I'm not attack. Don't get because trust me, I'm not, I don't want to be an asshole and try to attack. But we have all these people that go right and watch the game. They go to and no one really breaks down. Like th- th- that kid has played a hell of a game. He's had a hell of a year. He's played two different positions. He's been pretty damn good. The Avery kid, who I, or uh, the kid from Memphis. Yeah, uh, Avery. Who, uh, yeah, he's a good player. Uh, Avery. He's a good player. A rookie. Another rookie. But, but as we uh, – Peppers. Peppers has had two, three game, good games in a row. And I know he took the game yesterday as his fault because he fumbled when he fumbled. But once again, we're talking about a second-year player, first-year players. We're talking about youth. What does youth do early in their careers? They are a roller coaster. They're up and they're down. The left tackle position, the guy is getting ran. He's lost in the sauce. We knew that was going to happen, though, because, well, he's a fucking rookie that didn't play for a year and a half. Yeah. All I'm, all I'm getting at is, and like I said, I just wish we could have this conversation and then talk about why the coaching situation is trash. This roster is this roster. It's not that good. And where it is very good, they've never played NFL football. And any team that's relying on – think about all the, the six players we just broke down. And, I mean, and you can put Kirksey in there, and they play without their Pro Bowl linebacker who, uh, who got the jinx from Zach. But Zach did a good job of telling us who he is. I hope he plays another 200 games in a row. Now that Zach fucked him up. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Pro Bowler if he, if he comes back in a couple weeks. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So what I'm getting at. Despite despite Mickey Mouse being the coach, there's a small area, there's a very small gray area for the coach to be successful, any coach to be successful, considering the offensive line hasn't played up to the money that has been given, considered the plays you're deep, deep and I, I'm going out of my way not to mention how they're coached, Steven. I just look at that roster, and I told you before we started this, I watched Probably, I, I saw at least ten minutes of every football game I was played <laughs> this weekend because I put two big ass TVs in my living room and I just and I went to town. The talent level, man, is not at the same level as every other team, and they're relying upon babies to carry them. That is true. Games. That is correct. But, Dre, the Browns had problems five years ago. The Browns obviously had problems two years ago. The Browns had so many problems last year that they didn't win a single game the second time in history, defying all odds, stealing defeat from the jaws of victory on several occasions. And the Browns have problems now, and you just did a pretty damn good job laying some or most of them out, right, depending on how you look at it. But let me ask you this. When, okay. when has Hugh Jackson ever seemed like he's going to be part of the solution? He never did before he was brought in here. And that leads me to what I'm going to say next. You motherfuckers are rallying to get fucking Hugh fired to have the worst ownership of all fucking time make another decision to bring in another idiot. Congrats. Anybody that knows anything about the NFL that talks to the other coaches and talks to the other general managers and talks to scouts would have never told ownership to put the three coaches they have together as their top three men. Am I incorrect in that? Knowing their personalities, knowing what they've done in their previous jobs, knowing what they've said to the media in their previous <laughs> jobs, who would put these three guys together in one room? Pretty volatile. Just look at the his- just look at the history of Hugh Jackson's press conferences. Look at the, the history of what Todd Haley has done in Pittsburgh, Arizona. His whole Dallas, always near controversy. Todd Haley, 
Greg Williams, we know his history. We'll go look it up. You got three guys that nobody else in the NFL, other than the coach, the owner down in Cincinnati, will let lead their teams. Most coaches don't even want Greg Williams near their program because of the shit that comes along with them. Can I throw you? A- I'm just, I'm stating facts. I'm not arguing you know any of that. I'm not arguing any of that. Okay. I'm going to make one statement because I need to say it, even though I'm not totally comfortable saying it. And then I'm going to throw you a thought. Okay. Okay. When this thing ends, and it's inevitable, right? I, I don't no you know. I, I think everybody from all angles should back off now. I'm not sure it's going to happen at the bye week. As I've been writing since August, they brought him back. There's no evidence they're going to pull the plug after a bad start. And we're officially a bad start because the Browns aren't getting better. That's that's the problem, right? Everything okay. you lay out, positives, negatives, Demarius Randall, Jannard Avery, Desmond Harrison, they aren't getting better, right? And there's there's a lot of reasons for that. Well, it, are they or aren't they? They aren't. The no. team's not getting better. Are the players that are the player? I'm not serious. The players. The in the team is not getting better. better. At a time, okay. at a time when teams, good teams are figuring things out and great teams are separating, the Browns are not getting better. Okay, they're not. And press conferences are not the judge of these men. We've had this discussion a million times. We'll continue to have it. It's, you know, teams present them this way. It's part of the obligation and the job. You make a lot of money to answer questions, to represent the team, to talk about things. Because people care. People in Cleveland, people everywhere care about the Browns. But I want to say this now because I don't want it to be postscript, hindsight, whatever. You don't. A, a coach, a leader, a manager is not judged on his on his press conferences. But when so, have any of you, any of you, you Andre and you listening wherever you are, ever listened to Greg or Hugh and thought they were anything but full of shit? I'll wait. <laughs> Never. I'll wait. Okay, just wanted to say that. Todd, and secondly, Todd, Todd too. Put secondly, Todd in, wait. Put Todd in there too. I don't know. I'll say this. I listen to all these interviews all the time, and I listen to many of them three and four times over. Right. When I go back and listen to Todd and Baker Mayfield, like I learn some football sometimes. Yeah, I really do. I, I have, I have gained insight into Baker, not just as a person, as the quarter, listening to him talk about what he sees and doesn't see, how he's always made passing windows, how yeah, you can talk about the the offenses that he ran in college aren't like this, but there's basic principles that he's done. I've heard Todd hey, say. You know, Say uh, you, things you growing those, up with you, his dad and Marcel's those, those and how the game's different now. Anymore? What's that? You notice those those windows the last two weeks for Baker are no longer where they uh, used to that, be? That is very noticeable, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> That's part of the game. And, and I know a lot of this goes to the top, and it, and it does, because uh, because Ray Farmer and Sashi Brown and um, among other guys got this team here, and, and the one common thread has been the ownership. But I think it's unfair and potentially wrong of you to assume that the next hire is going to be wrong because I trust in Dorsey. And like I said, I'm not saying he's the god of football. I mean, I've been very clear for six months now that I don't think he picked the right quarterback. But I think they finally got a real adult and a real NFL person in there to do this job. And how this coaching search will be different than others is they have not had – the quarterback and Garrett and Ward to sell. So maybe, maybe accidentally the Haslam's helped themselves by keeping Hugh another year. We'll see. Touche. That's a just a great point. All of that is great. Um and I don't disagree with that. I, I think you you sold that. That's no guarantee, but you at least have an adult that knows what a football how football works in the room when they do the interviewing. I'm glad you said that. But those interviews Oh, and here's, and here's the other thing I want to go to. I mean, do you and, remember and, who, who Randy had when the, the year they hired Mangini, who was going around with him for these interviews? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I remember. Hell, fucking Red Guy basically got Mangini hired. Yeah. We were, you oh, were I know, I was there. in that like, room that day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Red Guy goes, yeah, Eric Mangini is, is free now. He bought, he bought Busta Nut and ran out the room. Like, it was, like, unbelievable. It was like he was like they told us Popeye's was giving out free biscuits. We were like, all right, well, we're gone. I mean, and the yeah. next guy's hired Mike Pettin, and then they got fired like two weeks later. <laughs> two weeks later. Like, this, no, is you're shit. Right. this is shit you forget. I, yeah, <laughs> it's all a part of it. So, okay, you're right. They have the hassles. They, they do now have John Dorsey. Here is the other thing, and I'm saying this to you, Zach Jackson, because you're my friend. And I got a couple more friends out for you. 
the rest of them. I got a couple of acquaintances out there, too. Um, when has, and I ask this every year when we get to this point, and I thought we could at least get to the, to the, to the break, but to the bye, but it's not happening, obviously. Right. Somebody tell me when we've seen a franchise resurrected by an interim coach. Well, that, that's, interim the, co- that's what a lot of people coach, are missing. That, that's what a lot ahead, of people are missing. No, no doubt. I mean, guys, you know, they're not winning the Super Bowl. That's how, and that's the goal. I, I think. I think there's two things you miss, right? I think when you end up on the extremes here, you miss that the goal is not just to get better and win these close games against Tampa freaking Bay. It's to win the championship. Right. And also you right. miss that if you're bad enough to fire a coach, no interim coach is coming in and riding you or turning things around and riding to Atlanta. He's there to to keep things stable and to be a professional uh, organization because Wait, the goal is right. – to win games each so, week. Some of the craziest, right, some of the craziest fights we took when we worked for the Browns or where, no offense to him because he's one of my favorite people in the world, was when we had interim coaches. <laughs> Terry. Am I wrong? <laughs> and I love Terry, and I didn't want to say Terry Bisky's name, but you said it. And we got the best quote on the podcast of all time from him. But do you remember those fights? Zach, do you like, 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 because what is, what is an interim coach? a substitute teacher and the interim coach is going to do it and say whatever the ownership tells him or whatever people in charge of him because he's going to try to keep the job because this may be his only opportunity to get another head coaching job but the players look right through it like they look through Shermer like they look through Petten like they like I don't know how they look at you I'm not there every day but at least it seems in the in, in the, the zone that they have and I don't know this for a fact and, if it, and here's the deal if I'm wrong on this then they do need to run him at least for the most part, it seems like guys are showing up. Guys are going by some set of rules, and I don't know this for a fact. I'm saying this from afar. But if you want to make sure they don't follow your rules, you want to make sure you got just the players running the asylum, bring in, bring in, let Todd or let the other crazy man run the team and watch what happens. Because all the players know more better than we do. They ain't making that motherfucker the head coach. That's what the players will be saying in the locker room. They're going to say, they ain't making that motherfucker the head coach. Kiss my ass. And you know I'm right. You know that's what happens. And I love I love it. I love hearing everybody go, oh, they got to fire you. They got to fire you. Oh, you guys want to see a mess? You guys want to see December and Berea? Let Todd or let Greg with two Gs be the, the interim head coach. When they're all the players know just like us, John Dorsey is not going to let one of them be his head coach and have his ass on the line. Because of him, because the next guy he hires as head coach is going to be the guy he's tied to, just like his quarterback. Because that's how GMing works in Cleveland. You're tied to whoever you draft and whoever you say to be your coach. And if they suck, you suck. Well, I would say this: I, I think Hard Knocks gave us a glimpse into what the culture is like, and we saw that that Hugh is not exactly um, nah. <laughs> set an outstanding right. tone. Um, nah. Secondly. It's not going to be Greg Williams. After Bounty Gate, he's toxic. Maybe that's the exactly. only reason. Maybe it's not. So if there is a move made. So you're going to so you're gonna give, you give it to Todd who can't score a touchdown in the first half? Yeah. And who runs reverses at the one-yard line? Well, listen, in that situation, the right move is always to hire the special teams coach because, A, because he works with guys on both sides of the ball, and his job is to see plays two and three plays yeah. ahead of time, which you still cannot do and right. never has Kids, been able to do. Wait, wait, take a time out. Kids, Zach just said one of the most important things. If you really want to know how football works and how and how coaching works, you're absolutely right. What he just said is one of the truest things ever. Say it again, why special teams coaches are so important, why it'd be a huge joke to let Amos Damus be your head coach. Because they work with guys on both sides of the ball, over 50% of the roster, and their job is to see things happening two and three plays in advance to have their guys ready. The bingo. That is so important. And that's why the great special teams coaches usually stay with the same team for about 15 years. <laughs> because Seriously. they're really because they're good valuable. Ones. Yes. Right. Really right. valuable. Look in, Jerry Rossberg has been with Baltimore since he left us, and he probably can retire as a Raven. Trying to who's the guy that, that Mangini brought in that was great. He's still coaching. He's in San Fran. When he went to San Brad Seeley. Brad Seeley. Brad Seeley was was he? Brad Seeley's phenomenal to me. How he's not become a head coach is beyond me. 
probably because he doesn't play the game and probably because of the connection to Mancini. <laughs> but he should be a head coach. He's one of the smartest coaches out there. Him like I've ever been around because of what you just said. He saw the game before it happened. So I get why everybody's in hysteria about Hugh, but I just don't think you really want those kids. And, and see, and this is the conversation I believe the Haslam's have to make. I think the, and I'm glad we talked about the, the guys, the guys that we actually like watching every week, because for five years, five years ago, we couldn't even do that. Zach. Yes. When's the last time we could sit around and be like, man, I like watching this guy play, or I like, I like, I, I like how this guy plays. They have guys like that now, and you have to ask yourself as a, a, as ownership and as John Dorsey, what do we want to show this youth that you're trying to mold into? You know, remember when Petten was like, play like a brown. Well, you well, just made the only the case for pulling the plug. The only way it's going to happen is if they lose through the bye week. That's the only, they're you, know, you guys that are gathered around Twitter or that are getting ready to burn, it's, that, that's the only way it's going to happen is if they just keep losing and it's right. a bye week. Otherwise, they're not right. going to do it, and they still might not do it then, guys. I mean, how much evidence right. do you need that he's not the answer? <laughs> right, right. Right. <laughs> right. And, and like I said, I don't disagree. I, and I, and I, hate, I hope people understand. That's not – and, like, when people come at me, I'm like, nice stand for you. No, I'm, it's not. It's bigger than just. And, and do you? And I think you understand that. My comments and what I'm saying is much bigger than just Hugh Jackson. And I tried this, and I've gone back through different coaches, different times. I understand the frustration Sunday at three o'clock. I understand it just as much, if not more, than most of you, because I there's different. Like, you, when you've been a part of the game or see the game, you know how the game the game's supposed to go. I see things that, that I like. I text different people where they're like, "Yeah, that was." that was dumb why would you do that or why would the guard pull i get it but i also get that you don't want a wasted six games or a wasted 10 games and what i mean by wasted what happens sometimes you get an interim coach it becomes wasted because there's no everybody's driving outside of the lines there's no lines anymore no you're there's right no you're right no identity but you and might get a circle of the wagons what, what i say at the top of this segment the Browns have been in so many circle of the wagons games. We have to win this to stop the bleeding. We have to win this to prove that we're something other than a top five drafting team in the laughing stock of the league. And how many of those have they won? One. One. Right. Right. You're right. You're right. Well, <laughs> that's true. The other thing, though, is this is about winning and losing. It is. I, I, it is. I, I agree. But you know what? If you don't give, it, they don't have a roster to win. And here's the, but here's what kills me about yet the last 24 hours. Because of how they played leading up to the Tampa game, our expectations got so much higher than what they probably should have been. Because all week long, it's just like when they came out and laid an egg against who they laid an egg against two weeks ago. Got their oh the Chargers. The Chargers. When everybody was like, oh, they went back to back, blah blah blah. Chargers beat the beat the stuffing out of them. They out they beat them in so many different ways. It was embarrassing. And I can get why people would be pissed at, at the head coach because that game was embarrassing. But yesterday, I felt like we all walked in there cocky and forgot it was an NFL game on the road and forgot when Tampa Bay got their schedule, they saw a fucking homecoming game on October, uh, what was it, <laughs> October 21st. Well, that, that's, that's the like, thing, like, Gray. Like, no matter who the coach is, I think you have to start taking some ownership and we're tired of being the homecoming game. But I, I got to disagree. The flip side of that, I guess, more than I got to disagree is that if you do have to make a change, if you do make a change, whatever. And again, guys, I don't know how many times I can say I'll be surprised. It, it, this time, what is it, the last week of October? Yeah, it's the last week of October, at least the last NFL week of October. Right. I'll be surprised if it happens. But I, I don't think it's all lost. I, I understand your substitute teacher logic, and I've seen it just like you have. But the important thing is number six is playing. The young guys are playing. They're, I mean, you know, Miles only played 10 games last year. Right and and didn't right. play him at a hundred percent as we've been over. Right, like Nick Chubb has to learn the NFL game, not just take the ball and make people miss because he can do that. Right, he's got to play. Right, Desmond right. Harrison has not right. played. Desmond Harrison has played one of the last four football seasons. Antonio Callaway has oh. played a total of like two of the last six football seasons. Right, like 
they, right. they got to play, so there's still importance there. But the goal is to win. Every Almost every team in this league pays $8 million or so to their coaching staff. And I, I, that's not a number I have in front of me on the computer. It's it's a ballpark when you think about what most head coaches make, what most coordinators make. They have 20-person staffs. It, that might be a low number. So the goal right. is to win sure. games, right? The Raiders are going to win. With, but who's going to win with what you just named all those players at? Dre, this not roster, many. Not this, many. Not this many. roster is middle of the road. Back end, mm. middle of the road. Mm. This roster is six is seventeenth to twenty second. Let's do, wait, wait, let, let's do this. Let's agree. Let's agree to a middle road team. I'm thinking Tennessee when you say that as a middle of the road team. You just said oh, we've just agreed most of their best talent. Our first tier or second one and a half year players. You can't be a middle of the you can't be a middle of the talent team when when three fourths of your best talent is all twenty two or twenty one years old. That's right, and that's been that's a product we, of your culture. What's that? That's been a product of your culture, and that's why the first thing Dorsey did was go get Tyrod, who's an adult, Jarvis, who's an occasional adult, and Demarius Randall, who's an adult. <laughs> Right? That's why the first thing right. he did, and that's why he went out and signed 13 more guys. Some of them never played. Some, you know, Jeff Janis, Donald Stevenson, they never played. Drew Stanton, God, God willing, he never plays. But that's why you <laughs> had to do that because he was making up for past errors. But I, and I'm not disputing. Uh, the Bengals have this rookie safety named Jesse Bates, and he became oh. the first rookie to start for the Bengals game one, week one. In nine years. It is not a kid's game. It is a grown-ass man's game. You are right about that. But you have to play. You have to experience it. And you're right. I I understand what you're saying, and I catch myself in saying, hey, the Browns are 2-4-1, and and maybe that's about where they should be. But the fact is they've had chances to win games and yeah. they are not getting better, and that's all that really cares. I, 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 I yeah, really, you know this, even in my writing, I try to avoid the stats unless it's a superlative or something to make an argument, right? Like, right, I want right. to, I watch the game, I watch every training camp practice. I know the league. I watch every Sunday, Thursday, Monday night game. I watch the Browns, and I see a team that's not getting better. I see a coach that doesn't feel the game and doesn't think two and three plays ahead, and I know the inevitable is coming. That's all. I don't. I, well, the end of, it, that is happening. It's we know it's happening. I guess what I'm saying is I'm not. If you've listened to anything in this podcast for, and it's been an hour, and I'm I'm still good to go. Sure. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> you need to eat. I don't. Well, you need well to just eat. let me tell you this. It, it's, it's the last week of October. We just established that. I, I mean, this is legit. When I say this, guys, like in the season, you lose your mind a little bit. Right. Um, we've got two months plus to talk about coaches. We just do. Right. Well, hey, hey, the only thing I, you're right. Oh my God. The bills are on Monday night football next week. Derek Anderson. Like, against the Patriots. DA. Oh, he's going to get killed. I love him. Anyway, the one thing I want everyone to take from everything I've said, not one time have I given the head coach credit for being a great coach or even good. All I'm Straight doing don't lie. is giving. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm doing, though, is giving the basis of what you really are looking at. You're watching a very young talent team. The veterans they brought in are just their mercenaries that are collecting a check. No offense to Ty Taylor, but that's where he's at right now. He's just he's collecting it, and that's, it's his job. I'm not beating him up for it. And now that they've had some injuries. Like, like you know, like okay. Like I'll go back to the penalties because I want people to understand. I almost broke a glass yesterday when they couldn't get off the field because they keep getting stupid fucking penalties. It's like third and twenty, and, and the guy gets twelve yards, and they still end up getting the first down because they, they make stupid fucking penalties. And when I look at that, the first thing I don't think is fuck you, Jackson, because I because my first thing is that's a dumbass player. Like, that's a dumb fucking play. Or he was getting his ass beat. He was just hanging on for dear life. I just think at some point, like, they're not a good team. I don't see them as middle-of-the-road talent. I would say, and this is, and I'm not I'm not jumping you on this. I think the talent low has been so fucking level, low that you watched that just seeing three or four guys that can chew, can chew bubble gum and walk at the same time makes you think it's middle-of-the-road. I, I know that, they're too, about 20, but... 
But listen, the, de- the defense has played well enough in stretches to know there, there's some guys there. Stretches. But offensively, when we and we should know this, with a rookie quarterback and with so, you, your three most important, four most important positions on offense are all rookies. Your tailback, your left tackle, your quarterback, your, your second receiver. So you're telling me a rookie is going to have the ball at the snap, at the handoff, and at the throw probably 70% of the time. It's and hard. the most and the most important fucking def- blocker on your team is that left tackle has never played in the NFL. I'm not. This is not riding a ship for fucking Hugh Jackson. This is the reality of what you're watching. And because they've scored a couple touchdowns, like and I hear people bitching about them going for it on fourth down before the first half. They ain't got shit to lose. This is about winning and losing. Yeah, and if yeah it's about winning and, and losing. And that's why you got to take those points. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Nobody says a fucking word if, if Baker Mayfield has his arm, the ball is right. arm. If he has the ball in his correct arm, it's a first down, and then you can bitch because they don't score. But they had a first down, but you got a young player that put the ball away in the wrong, in the wrong arm. Whose fault is that? I've been, I was coached at eight years old. You put the ball in the arm nearest the sideline. Whose fault is that? Baker Mayfield's fault. I'll answer. So, yeah, they made a decision. They had a first fucking down. And everybody wants to tweet and, make, and be mad at you for that decision. Well, the decision worked. Your rookie quarterback made a shitty play. But I know that doesn't sell underwear. That doesn't make you guys run and go put him on a fucking side of a, a cardboard box. That doesn't play into here. He's your new savior. It's the truth. He made a bad play. That's not the coach's fault. That's not a bad decision. The first down was gotten. That's what drives me crazy about this conversation. We said we we can say, right? <laughs> but yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not arguing not- that, Dre. But the thing is, it's an NFL game. You're only down two scores, and you got a gift. Of course, you want a touchdown, but nothing has gone your way. So you're already thinking about this as a competent Zach. head coach as Zach. soon as the turnover Zach. happens, right? Zach, Zach. Let me ask you a question. Would it have been a spark if it was the first down? If the ball's in the right arm, he gets the first down. They score no. a touchdown. Would anybody no. say a word? Nope. Would anybody say? Wait, wait. Nobody. If they if they get the first down and still get points, is this even something we talk about? No. You it's say not. They, you say the game started to turn when they got those points at the end of the right. first half on the gift from the terrible right. Buccaneers. Good. Both coaches got in that game today. yesterday will hey. not be employed next year. Hey. I, I, this will be my finishing point. If the Browns have middle of the, if you as your words, not mine. If the Browns have middle of the league talent, the Bucks got top ten talent. Well, the Bucks got no defensive talent, at least none healthy. No, no, I mean, they got JPP. But, my, but I mean, Gerald McCoy hey, didn't play. play. Hargraves is on IR. Hart Har- Alexander was the lost kid that got hurt. The, yeah. the other linebacker that got hurt, Quan. I was yeah, yeah. But that's my. But okay, you just made my point about talent. You just named four guys the Browns that got nobody near. Just veterans that can fucking play the game. They, know, they got nobody in the secondary, but their front seven and their old cornerback on the onside side and Hargraves, those are all competent NFL players that can play for any team. No doubt. The Browns don't have that. The Browns don't have that. They got a lot more of they them don't. than they used to. They got a lot more of them they than used they used to. to. Yes, and that's why I will not agree with they got middle of the road talent. They got like 23rd, 24th, which is road. much better Which is much better than 40th that they had the last two, three years, Sashi. So they oh, are yeah, better. Right. No doubt, but they're at the bottom. But they're at the bottom half of the league talent wise. Well, that's all. We'll I, and and and, they, and look with John Dorsey and what they're doing. That's where patience really comes in, and you got to trust football people. They're getting close. And if John Dorsey can find his coach in the off season, fuck. I, like as soon as John Dorsey came in, the first thing I said to you is he's got to have a list of coaches, right? Remember that was the first thing I said to you when John Dorsey got here. He's got to have a list of coaches. And you were like, well, let's just let him get here, calm down. You were right. But my point still stands clear. Whoever he has in his mind as a head coach ain't changing in the next 10 weeks. Let the fucking thing play no, out. And but figure but out trust me play. when I say it's going to be a lot easier to get that guy because you have a quarterback, because you have those young yes. defensive studs in place, and because John yes. Mercy is already in place. Yes. It's, yes. And, it's you got money to, and you got money to spend in free agency. They have a chance to be, they have a chance to be middle of the pack talent-wise in 19. How about that? Yeah, and I that's mean, I, to make a coach. Yeah, no, they're, they, they – listen, here's what I think. Like, even though it's low bar, right, and even though we're doing a lot of comparing, as, as you have astutely pointed out, 
to past Browns teams. Like, I think overall, the arrow's headed in the proper direction. Don't you? I agree. Yeah, yeah I do. I agree. Right. I totally so that's agree. why I say, like, okay, if, if I'm optimistic on saying they're 17th or 18th talent-wise, that's fine. But that, to me, is pro- – Dre, this was always going to be an experimental year. This was all – as I've written and said, this was always going to be, hey, not all 5 and 11s are created equal. Let's see where they are. Right. I mean, I was talking to someone today whose opinion I trust very much, and he had asked me to read something for him, and we got to talking Browns about this and that, and I said, I completely agree with this. I think you downplayed this, and I completely disagree with this. And he, it, one of his responses was, you know, if they got if they got the quarterback right, does anything else matter? And the head coach nope. does matter. The head coach does matter. Right, right. And so right now, on October, whatever not day it is, 2018, they don't have the head coach. They might have the quarterback. And that's progress. Let's get out of here. I got shit to do. And he says he has shit to do. He's just like that famous New York Jets coach that want, they like feet and need to eat a snack at 1035. <laughs> I need God a bless God y'all. Need damn to... snack. <laughs> <laughs> Kenichiwa snacks. This is fun. We'll be back later on in the week. Thanks um, to C. Thanks welcome. to Honeymoon me... Girl. Thanks to American Fireworks. A to Z Podcast.com. Right now, I'm going to put the Rec to Connect link up. Facebook.com slash A to Z Podcast. He's Andre. I'm Zach. We'll see you later this week. Let me say one thing. One yep. thing. One thing. You're welcome for the best conversation about the Browns you're going to have anywhere in Northeast Ohio. See y'all later. Love y'all.